Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Thank you so much for being here. A few weeks ago, I did a video on the five things that I have learned from my science background and how it applies to keeping fish. And so many of you said, yeah, hey, do a part two. If you haven't seen that video, it's in the upper right-hand corner. I will link it in the description below. But I've got five more things that I've learned from my science background that I have applied to fish keeping. If you are new to the channel or didn't see that first video, I've been keeping fish for 46 years, but I also have a undergrad in biology, minored in chemistry, did a master's degree in biotechnology and chem chemical science and have a master's cert in aquaculture and fish health. And so I try to bring all of that background into a lot of the videos that we do here on Primetime Aquatics. Now here's five things, five additional things I have learned based on science. Thing number one, when you are quarantining fish, I don't treat the fish unless there are obvious signs of disease. And there's a really, really good reason for that. I think it's actually one of the most important things that I have learned based on my background, especially having taught microbiology for the last 17 years or so. And that is when you treat fish, those chemicals stress fish out. Now, if they're sick, you have to add the antibiotics or maybe the antiprotozoals. However, if they're not sick, all you're doing by adding medications is making the fish's immune system weaker. You're stressing them out. And so when I quarantine my fish, I make sure that I only medicate the fish when it is absolutely necessary. Medications not only stress out your fish, but they can also, depending on the type of medication you use, they can also damage the fish tank cycle, the aquarium cycle, where you have the microbes that are producing or microbes that are consuming ammonia, converting that to nitrite, and then a different set of microbes convert the nitrite to nitrate. And if you kill those microbes, you wind up causing a lot of additional issues. So really important for me, we quarantine thousands of fish every four to six weeks, and not a single one of them see any meds unless I start to see evidence of disease. Number two, Quarantine, 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 quarantine. It is incredibly important. I just mentioned that I don't treat fish in quarantine unless I need to, but the quarantine process is incredibly important. Fish can carry disease for a lot longer than you think they can, and you can bring them back into your fish room or into your fish tanks, and they look fine from the pet store, or they look fine when they show up at your door if you had them shipped. And then a week later, two weeks later, maybe even three weeks later, they start to exhibit signs of disease. And so it's really important for us. We quarantine all the fish we bring in here for four weeks. If you don't know how to quarantine fish, I'm gonna put that video in the upper right-hand corner as well as in the description below. If you hear nothing else in this video, quarantine your fish, please watch that video. I go over all the things necessary to quarantine fish properly. But for us, it's four weeks because what I've learned in the aquaculture and fish health certificate that I did, Master Cert, is fish can sometimes look fine and two or three weeks later, they start to exhibit signs of internal parasites. All of a sudden you start seeing ick after a couple weeks. Usually you'd think we'd see that after a day or two. That is not always the case. In our fish room, I cannot tell you how many times we have seen things pop up two or three weeks after bringing the fish into our fish room. Not only that, but sometimes your existing fish can be carriers of disease that might expose your new fish. So you're actually going backwards here. And what we wanna do by quarantining our new fish is get them eating, get them healthy, make sure that their immune systems are fully functioning, that they're not stressed from being shipped all over the world potentially. And so by the time you introduce them into your tank, four weeks later, nobody's chasing them around, they're healthy, their immune systems are fully functioning. And so if you have your current fish that are carrying disease, they're not going to infect the new fish that have never been exposed to that disease. Third thing that I have learned based on my science background, and this has to do with algae, the dreaded algae. I have done a full comprehensive video on how to deal with algae. There it is in the upper right-hand corner, as well as in the description below. But algae is a function of multiple factors. It's not usually any one thing. One, the amount of light and the light intensity will help algae grow. Two, the amount of nutrients in the aquarium in the form of things like ammonia, nitrite, nitrates, phosphate, that will all enhance the growth of algae. And three, competition for those nutrients. Do you have plants in the aquarium? Do you have fish that can consume the algae? And so all of those things holistically will fit together 
to help control algae in your aquarium. If any one of those things is drastically off, one or more, you might have a problem. And so that's why I look at everything light intensity. We don't want the lights on too bright. We don't want them on too long. We definitely want to have plants or something in the aquarium that can compete with the algae for nutrients. I have taken care of algae outbreaks. I had a blackbeard algae outbreak in an aquarium one time in a 20 long. I added hornwort. It's a floating plant that grows really fast. Within two weeks, boom, black hair algae was completely gone. Or black beard algae, I should say, was completely gone. So algae is a function of many things. These last two are potentially the most important. Number four, have patience. This is something I stress throughout many of my videos when we're on live streams, I talk about it all the time. As a fish keeper, you wanna have patience. From my biology background, what does that mean? It means we have patience when it comes to introducing fish with quarantine, something I've already talked about. We have patience with letting our ecosystem develop. Sometimes the ecosystem is gonna be a little bit out of balance when you're adding new rocks, new wood, fresh substrate, Maybe you're adding cycled filter media to an aquarium and that's not quite completely populated with beneficial bacteria to the point that you're stocking the aquarium. The cycling of the aquarium, making sure that your water parameters are stable. All of those things take patience. Don't add too many fish at one time. Don't add fish too quickly to your display tanks before they've properly gone through quarantine. If you have patience and you let the ecosystem develop over time, it takes time for nature to do its thing. It takes time for beneficial bacteria to grow to proper concentrations. It takes time for plants to grow to a size that's gonna allow it to sufficiently pull nitrates out of the water column. Patience. Last thing, number five, and this is really, really coincides with my biology background. Do your research. You hear that all the time. You need to do your research. There is a really good reason for this. When you're not doing your research, mistakes happen fish die. And so what do I mean by that? We're researching the types of fish that we're putting into our ecosystems. We want to make sure that they're, the fish are appropriate for the size of the tank. The fish are appropriate for our water parameters. The fish that we want can go together and we're not going to have any problems with bullying or anything like that. The fish that we have, we can properly feed. Right? These are living things in our aquarium and my biology background has to want to give these organisms the best ecosystem possible and try to balance it as best we can. And so when you're looking at fish, when you're looking at aquariums, when you're looking at ways to keep fish together, definitely look at research when it comes to videos, when it comes to your pet store owners. It's gonna go a long way. That is why we've done so many species profiles on so many different types of fish on our channel. So those were five more things that I absolutely have stressed in fish keeping, at least in our fish room, mostly because of my science background. Would love to hear from you. Are there other things that you have learned over time, some really good advice that you can give people that will allow them to keep fish really, really well? If you want more information on how to quarantine fish, check out that video in the upper right-hand corner. If you want more information on how to control algae, that video in the lower right-hand corner is the place for you. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you in the next one.